Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. This week, is light a bit too light? Hi, I'm Ayush Panwar and my question is, how can light be deflected? Because according to Newtonian gravity, gravity is a property of mass. Then how can light, which is considered massless, be deflected due to gravity? Light has no mass, apparently, so what little trick is gravity using to make a beam of light bend? I'm Andrew Ponson. I'm a researcher at the Kavli Institute for Cosmology at the University of Cambridge, and I also appear every month on the Naked Astronomy podcast. So, actually, regardless of the mass of the object, the acceleration caused by gravitational pull is the same for any object. Now, Newton came along and gave a mathematical explanation of this and the the maths essentially is that mass appears on both sides of the equation which governs this behavior so it actually cancels out but if the mass is actually zero then it's no longer really mathematically valid to to do that cancellation Nonetheless, it's certainly true experimentally and mathematically that as you go to smaller and smaller and smaller masses, these things are still deflected in the same way by gravity. But since there's this sort of mathematical paradox of trying to divide by zero, that isn't conclusive. And to get the full mathematical answer actually requires coupling a description of what we call electromagnetic waves. That's the uh, kind of physics underlying the way that light travels to Einstein's theory of gravity, which is general relativity. And only then do we get rid of this paradox of dividing by zero and end up with a conclusive answer that shows that just as objects of any mass are affected by gravity, so light, which has no mass, is also affected by gravity. So what is it that relativity tells us about gravity that can help us solve the problem? So in the end, Einstein's description of gravity, which is general relativity, tells us that the effect of gravity is caused by distortions in space and time itself. Now, if you do something as fundamental as distorting space and time and and reshaping it, then anything that lives inside space and time will be affected. And that includes waves. And so waves can be bent and can follow different paths if you change the geometric properties of the space they live in. Gravity can effectively bend space and time, meaning that anything in its field is also distorted, and that includes light. Lovely answer from Imat Fall on the forum, who went into a little more detail, explaining how light follows a geodesic. Under gravity, this is the shortest distance it can travel from one point to another within curved space. And now for something else, also subject to the whim of space-time fluctuations, germs. This is Emilio Romero. I'm calling from Guayaquil, Ecuador. First of all, congratulations on a great show. Now my question. The other day, after watching a TV commercial, my daughter asked me, how do we know that certain disinfectants kill 99.9% of the germs? And what would happen if we use it twice? Would that kill 100%? Thank you. Can a double washing clean your hands of all bacteria and viruses, or should we just carry boxes of latex gloves everywhere we go? Answer to us via email with chris at thenakedscientists.com, or why not write or draw your thoughts on our forum, and you can find that at thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.